Ladies and gentlemen, it's Freaky Friday. Yes. The podcast daily <laughs> is back. And guess what else is back? Bold predictions. Bold predictions. I, my first one of the year, and I got it right. Hot dog. But one you, for one. He killed Snappy J, so. Yep. Uh, Dead. Murderer. Uh, that's Bill Landis joining us for his inaugural edition. We're doing research. Debut edition. He He's under the mistaken belief that we actually prepared these yeah. in advance and didn't just wing it off the hmm. top of our head, which is what really makes them bold, Bill. I don't... Is that a I just wanted to, I, I wanted to make sure I was actually being bold. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's Bill. Sperm. I'm Austin. We also have a new addition to Freaky Friday, which is we're going to not just pay attention solely to the football program, and I have uh, an interview that will come up in the middle of Bold Predictions with two Ohio State women's volleyball captains ahead of a huge match. Maybe How you, was that thing? That, it was dangerous. It was coming at you. Uh, they play Texas on Freaky Friday night. It's their season opener. No, those go down. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great conversation with them. We'll put that right in the middle. Bill will be doing more research while that plays for you yeah, all. Probably. And then we're going to drill down. Drill down. These are going to be the season-long predictions for Ohio State. Next week, Bold Predictions will be back in its true form uh, ahead of the opener with Notre Dame. Yep. So these are season-long bold predictions. Yep. Bill, are you ready, or should we burn? No, Bill should go first. Can I ask? Can I ask one question? Because I'm new. I'm, I'm new, new here. This is yeah. established. Where within the realm of possibility should these land? Like, should I exaggerate to make a point, or should I actually try to guess things <laughs> that are realistic? Why not both? They don't have to come true. Yeah, I mean, no one's judging you. We don't for, keep except score. for everyone out there. Oh, we don't it's, keep score. Great. Well, that's all I need to know. Except that I win every week. Because mine are normally the best. Unbelievable. Garbage. I'm the king of both. It's like it's already started. Anyway, Bill, what's your first one? You guys know the last time Ohio State's defense pitched a shutout? Um, Florida A&M? Uh, more recent than that. What was the score? And I'll tell you who it was against. 42-0, I think it was. Oh, okay. Cincinnati. 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 2019 is the last shutout. You guys know the last time they had two shutouts in one season? 2019. 2014. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Two shutouts this year for the Ohio State defense. Is that bold enough? That's bold. It's pretty pretty bold. bold, right? You want to drill down and tell us who the games are? Arkansas State, week two. Uh-huh. And then whenever they play Rutgers, whenever that is. <laughs> <laughs> because well, did they have like three games in a row where like Rutgers didn't score against Yeah, them? those were some fun maybe, games. Maybe that's not quite as bold as it is. And then 20. It's always <laughs> fun when you're in Piscataway and they've got those old dudes dressed up like they're revolutionary war heroes to yeah. fire the cannon. And they never do anything for the entire game. And then 2020 happened and Rutgers almost like... Gave people heart attacks in the second half. Yeah, that was a wild game. That was pretty crazy. I think uh, I think this defense is going to be far less passive than it's been, which is to say, like, it won't just sit back and kind of let teams move the ball on them, which then allows them to, like, score a trash touchdown or two. Mm -hmm. So the, the 42 to 14 games, I think, can be 42 to nothing games with, with the way this defense is going to play. And I think this defense is going to be one that prides itself on actually keeping teams out of the end zone. Uh, so I'll call I'll call a couple of shutouts this year too. I love that couple couple lockouts. And he drilled down. Love it. I love it. Uh, here's my first. J.K. Johnson leads Ohio State in interceptions this year. Oh yeah, Ooh, uh, okay. with Folks. five interceptions. <laughs> I don't know when Getting spicy. The last time Ohio State had a defensive back with five picks in a season, it might have been like Malik Hooker in 2015, maybe. Um, Sounds but, like you should have been doing your research. I don't do research for this, <laughs> folks. We're just, I'm just saying I got a feeling that J.K. Johnson's going to do some stealing. And I think that's, that is going to lead to... Prepared for this. I, I, mean, I, I didn't prepare research. I did prepare rhymes. Oh. But I think that J.K. Johnson is just a guy that we're watching ascend. We're watching him sneak his way up into that conversation. And Ohio State fans should be really excited about these cornerbacks as long as they're able to stay healthy. And Denzel Burke told us on Tuesday that they are, and he wouldn't lie to us. Then there's no <laughs> reason at all that... All these guys shouldn't be exciting, but I think J.K. Johnson's going to be a surprise. So he leads Ohio State in interceptions for the year 2022. Yeah, I don't think that they're quite to that level that Denzel Burke was promising yet, but uh, he was saying that by next Saturday he wouldn't lie they to would us. be. And he also, he's a truth teller. Famously yeah. truthful person. Denzel yes. Burke. He is a straight shooter. Yep. Um, Berm? Oh, God. Already? You're so pathetic. <laughs> Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to finish with 130 receptions. Okay, that's bold. That for Ohio. A that's a spicy meatball. A catches. 130 catches. He's going to line You're up. suggesting he's going to average 10 catches per contest. Well, I'm counting. I think Ohio State's going to play 15 games. Maybe that's a bold prediction to you. 
I don't think it's well, like I don't old. think you can ever just look ahead past the Big Ten championship game. Okay, I'm not, game I'm not counting 13 Have you never games. heard that before? I'm counting his entire season, yeah. and I believe that it is going to be 15 games okay. and 130 receptions. So, so seems like that's a twofer because you're boldly predicting number. that Ohio State right, plays hey, in the national championship game as I'm well. Gonna, I'm going to double down mm -hmm. and double dip at the same time with a bold prediction, and you can't stop me. I wouldn't dare. Do you have any fear that there's going to be too many blowouts in there for him to get to that number? I think that a lot of, yeah, that that would be a concern for sure. But he, I think there's so many different ways that Ohio State is going to get him the football. Yeah. And some of these, you know, you may have drives where he gets it five, six times in a row because he's coming out of the backfield and nobody can figure out a way to match up with him. I think a lot of the shifts, uh, <laughs> motions. That, that Sorry, about, right. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> pollen counts high. Birds and pollen count yeah. out here on a freaky Friday. Woo. Sorry about I, that, folks. I think. You know, he's not hes not one of those one-catch, 80-yard touchdown guys, yeah. most cases. The, the one long one against Nebraska excluded. And he, you can string together a drive where he gets it four, five, six times in a row. And I think that, that when Ohio State, when Ryan Day finds something and a team that doesn't know how to match up and he starts coming out of the backfield, going in motion, getting some cheap bubble screens and things like that, it's going to cause a lot of problems and also allow him to rack up a huge number of receptions. Does and I know that... There's other talented people on the offense yeah. that are going to touch it. Doesn't matter to me because Do, it's going to be a crazy. Does year this not me. blow your mind? When we started, both of us, Austin and I, each started covering Ohio State for the first time on the field <laughs> in 2012. Uh, this is the leading stuff, receiver yeah. in that season had 13 catches, and there were two games a year ago where Jackson Smith and Jigba had 15 catches. Is that true? Yes. Shout out Jake Stoneburner, 2011. So then it was. The oh. transition in, in this offense, in, in what Ryan Day has brought to Ohio State in the last five years offensively is staggering when you really stop to sit back and think. Yeah, about it. one of the first press conferences when I got on this beat was Urban Meyer calling the wide receiver unit clown shoes. And now, Brian Hartline's like, watch this. Yeah, these are dancing shoes now, pal. <laughs> Look you know, at what what's your doing? next one? My next one, again, tell me if this is not bold enough. C.J. Stroud will have more rushing touchdowns than Mayan Williams. Woo, doggy! Good Lord. You've, for someone who's never played this game before, you sure <laughs> know how to play this game. This guy knows how to play the game. Yowza. I, I don't know off the top of my head how many Mayan had last year. I'm going to guess like a handful. Uh, and I think that C.J. will have, what do you have, one last year? I Or none last year? I don't think year? he had any last no, year. He, he had one the year before. He had one the year before. Yeah, a long one. He had one called back last year against Michigan, right? Off yeah. on, a, on a penalty. So I think he had none last year. I think he's going to be like in the six, seven range. Holy macaroni. And that might, like, I just, I think he's going to run the ball more this year. I don't think they're going to have a ton of design run in the offense because that's not what he does or it's not the best way to utilize him. But I think the red zone struggles for this team were great enough last year that they're going to want to bring some of that back into those areas of the field. Yeah. You know, QB sneaks, simple zone read stuff, like whatever. I think CJ can do that stuff. He's a pretty good athlete. I don't think people realize how good an athlete he is. And now that he's healthy, maybe the shoulder is less of a concern than it was last year. Um, and, you know, I think him talking about how fast he feels this year was him telling us that maybe he's going to be a little more willing to do that. So I think you'll see him tuck it and run a little bit more than he did last year, especially in that area of the I, field. I think the perfect example of that is obviously not to look at what Justin Fields did. It's the Maryland game for Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's like, all right, you need it to be done, and everyone's going to sell out to stop the running back, then I'm going to pull it and go in. Now, he did some that required some – physical punishment to get into the end zone. But I, there was also the one at TCU earlier in the year was like, well, I'm going to walk it in. Yeah. And then C.J. Stroud might have those opportunities. That's that's a good one. I like it. I like it. 2,000-yard uh, rushers, is that bold? Is that bold? Is one of them C.J. Stroud? Actually, no. Oh, okay. Um, there, it's it's, it's, it's just Trevion Henderson and Mayan I mean, Williams. In this offense with these receivers, yeah, that's bold. I mean, I think, I think back to 2019 when Ohio State was really in my opinion, the best team in the country and should have won the national championship, but didn't. That was a year when you had J.K. Dobbins with 2,000 yards rushing, and you also had a couple thousand yard receivers or right on the cusp of 1,000 yards. And I, I think you can get that this year. I think this offense should be generating 600 yards of offense a game. And I think both Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson will average more than five and a half yards a carry and put up 1,000 yards this season. Yeah. Burn. Yep. He all, uh, I, Oh, you want more? When was the last time? 2014, Austin. <laughs> 2014 was the last time they returned to punt for a touchdown. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen this year? Cameron Martinez is going to return to punt for a touchdown. Cameron Martinez yeah, great. is going to return a punt. Has that guy ever even scored a touchdown? Uh, well, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in high school, uh -huh. he played offense. Okay. He has a highlight reel 
Huh. On the internet. You can look it up. First time hearing of this. YouTube. Nine minutes of touchdowns. Just one, Guy is like his whole career or just one season? Oh, <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. buddy. Brace season. yourself. Okay, so drill down. Is he only going to return one for a touchdown? Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to have one. Oh, boy. Whoa. Cameron Martinez is going to have one. Wow. And, and Caleb Brown? Emeka Igbuka is going to return a kickoff for a touchdown. Wow. Well, now you're just kind of three all the bolts. Special team touchdowns. I don't want to get cheated out. Now here you're today. piling on. I'm just going to stack them all up, and all it's right. a bunch of bold predictions. That's how you become the king of bold predictions. Or you just name yourself the king. Yeah. Well, Which best, you come at the king, best not miss. We're going to take a break. We're going to regroup. we got more yeah, coming. This is ridiculous. It's Freaky Friday. Uh, first uh, of hopefully many as we look around the rest of campus. Uh, here comes a quick interview with the Ohio State women's volleyball team ahead of their match against Texas. All right, doing something new this week on the podcast daily. It is a Friday, and there's more than just one sport on the Ohio State campus, and we're going to start talking about it. Uh, what's going to happen this week? Hey, there's a top 10 showdown in the Horseshoe next week, but there is a top 10 showdown tonight in the Covelli Center. We have two captains from the Buckeyes, women's volleyball team, Kylie Murr and Mac Pedraza. They are ready to kick off the season or tip off the season. How do you guys say that? What do you just set the season? How does that work? Get it going. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, any of those work. <laughs> okay. Well, it. I believe the number seven preseason team in the country, the Ohio State Buckeyes, they will host the number two Texas Longhorns. They've got a match tonight at eight o'clock and another Saturday at eight o'clock. Uh, Kylie, what can we expect? This is a huge way to, to open the season. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think you can expect a lot from us Buckeyes. And I think not only are our coaches excited, but I think we're super excited, especially with all the experience we've had and especially it being one of the most prestigious um, teams in the nation that we get to host in Columbus. I think we're really excited to get them in Columbus and see what we can do with them. Mac, what, what is, uh, I don't know, training camp, uh, preseason practice been like for the Buckeyes? Yeah, we've been getting after it. That's for sure. A um, lot of two a days, three a days, a couple sessions a day, <laughs> video here and there. Um, I think we all have an end goal in mind. I think we want to go far in the tournament, but we're kind of taking it day by day. And that started with day one of preseason a couple weeks ago. And we've been getting after it every single day. I think the team is looking really good. We're really healthy, which is something that we haven't been able to say for a while. So I think um, we've put a lot of pieces together and we're ready to return a lot of people and keep going. So Mac, what tells you that there's something special about this team that could accomplish that by tournament time? Um, I think it just goes into like something as small as Kylie texting the team last night at like 10, 15. I'm so ready to beat Texas. Like we're <laughs> so invested. This group is so all in. We talk about it all the time. I think we can joke and practice. We can have some fun, but we also know how to take it seriously and get after it. And we know how we play best and we know how to bring the best out of each other. So I think it's just a really unique situation that everybody knows what everybody needs. And we're kind of just trying to tweak those little things and figure out that groove, but we're really in a good place to just keep figuring it out and keep getting better and better and better. All right. So Kylie, obviously you've had this on your mind. You're texting the team about it. How long have you been thinking about Texas? I've been thinking about it since the moment. Uh, she sent out that preseason schedule. Texas, <laughs> like I said, is one of those teams that not everyone's fortunate enough to play since they are so good. And the moment I found out we get a we get a stab at them, I've been it hasn't left my mind. All right, so I'll ask you the same thing about this team. You're a captain. You're setting the leadership. You're in that group text and trying to get everybody fired up in the week. What's what tells you that as you start here on August 26th that this this team has a chance to go where you want it? Yeah, I think this team. We've talked about it a lot, but we're tired of the Sweet 16. So I think we all just want more. We really want to reach that Elite Eight, that Final Four, and then hopefully that National Championship. So I think we all just kind of have a little edge with us, which I don't know if all teams have. And we have a lot of experience, and we're all just kind of sick of it. So we really have just been putting in the work, putting in that time to be the best teammate, to create that best chemistry. So I think we got a little something special with all the experience that we have. Uh Mac, you go first. I want you both to answer this. For anybody who hasn't been into the Cavalli Center for a big match like this, it gets it does get loud. It gets pretty raucous. I think there's a, this, we know that the Ohio State fan base will support uh, any high achieving team like you all, a top ten program. Uh, but when you're on the court, 
What is it like when the Cavelli Center is full? Yeah, I mean, you said it. We have the best damn fans in the land. So I think just having everybody, knowing that everybody's got your back, and it's rocking, like you said. It is loud. It's hard to even hear our teammates. We're having to talk, bring up that level of communication even more. Uh, those butterflies, those nerves are definitely there. <laughs> Even our um, our preseason scrimmage that we had a couple weeks ago, we had a couple fans turn out, and it was still like our freshmen's first chance to get on the court in front of some fans, see them in their jerseys. So I think the nerves are always there, but um, one of my teammates has a tattoo that says, uh, heart beats fast, let you know you're alive. And I think that's a good, uh, it's a great representation of how I feel out on that court. Like when your heart's beating fast, your heart's racing, uh, just lets you know you're living, you're doing exactly what you should be doing, and you're right where you're supposed to be playing the best volleyball in front of the best crowd. Yeah, like Max said, we got the best damn fans in the land, and I think that when all those people are cheering for you, it's just like a surreal moment. It's like these people don't even know who I am, and they're here cheering me on and wanting me to do <laughs> that. So it's really cool just to be in the atmosphere and be there with my teammates and knowing they have my back and, like, to hear the cheers and the band and the cheerleaders. Like, it's really cool. And we have one of the best announcers, father Panda, bro. He brings the energy every single night. And like, I I'll hear a big kill and I can just hear his voice like echoing in the background. And I think he just <laughs> raises the notch a little bit, but yeah, it's such a cool experience. And I'm so glad that we've been able to turn that program around and make that a sellout arena. And it's, it's a really cool experience and I'm really glad we get to experience it. Well, you say that nobody knows who you are. Well, that's why we're going to start talking more volleyball here on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last thing, you, you get in through preseason. I remember from my time when I actually covered volleyball more regularly, and I love volleyball, and I'm excited to uh, go check out some more of the matches this year with my daughter. You've got to have the celebrations down, you know? Like, And sometimes they go viral. Sometimes they're just a team thing. Like, How much time is spent to make sure that the celebrations are on point when you get into the opener it's it's it time is spent we even had a meeting <laughs> with our uh block o which is our like kind of our student section we took 30 minutes out of our practice time to meet with them so that they know what's up and they are <laughs> a big group and they can help us out because we go to other arenas and their fans eat you up and i think it's really important that those fans are really on your team and they're just as a part of the 16 as we are the ones on the court so it's really important and huge shout out to Riley McNeil at Girl Alert Team. She spends a lot of time and effort into making sure our bench is going and we have cheers for every individual person. We have cheers for aces and we have a cheer for the block. We hold up Sarah Sue. Like it is, it's incredible. Yeah. Riley McNeil and Meg McCann do a good job of it. And like Kylie said, we're really trying to get that block of student section to be our seventh man this year. So we've got some, got some big things planned and I think it's going to be even more fun to come out and watch some volleyball games. All right. It all starts tonight, eight o'clock. It is a huge Friday showdown, Ohio State and Texas. You won't want to miss it if you can't be there because tickets are going fast. FS1 getting some coverage going. All right. And then BTN on Saturday night, two huge matches. Uh, These two ladies are going to be a key part of it. Captains for the Buckeyes, Mac Pedraza, Kylie Murr. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us on the podcast daily. Good luck this season. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right. See you. All right, appreciate those uh, ladies taking out some time to talk about their big weekend set with Texas. Uh, check that out. Is that out. what it's called? Uh, a set? Why not? I mean, they play sets. I like it. I accept it. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a home and home, but they're both at the they're same both place. here. I yeah, don't know. It sounds exactly Home stand? Serious. Home stand. There you go. Yeah, I like they're that They're not better. playing three times. Anyway. Well, this is volleyball, by the way. A highly entertaining sport. It's a great sport. Love it. Absolutely. Covering college was awesome. And so we're going to be covering a top 10 matchup showdown in the horseshoe next week. There's one. Actually, there's two of them in the Covelli Center this weekend. Number two versus number seven. Uh, expecting huge crowds for both nights. Uh, check it out if you can. Uh, there's lots of great sports going on on this campus. And I can't wait for the one next weekend. Kicking off the season, the 2022 season for the Buckeyes. We have more old predictions coming hot right now. Bill, what else do you have in store for us? Uh, two players are going to have double-digit sacks. Ooh. Drill down. One of them is Jack Sawyer, and I've been thinking for the last three minutes who the other one could be. <laughs> I've, told, I've told you for weeks who it's going to be. I haven't come up with a name yet. I've told you for weeks. Berm thinks it's going to be. He thinks it's going to be Zach. He I said do. Zach Harrison's going to leave. I mean, he'd probably he'd probably be the logical choice there, right? I was I was trying to decide if I should go with a defensive tackle, but um, I think there might be too much rotation there for one of those guys to get that many sacks. Yeah, you're right. Um, all right, I'll go with Jack and Zach. The Jack <laughs> and Zach sack attack. Oh, oh. 
See, now you guys just all were working on your rhyme. Sell the t-shirts. I, I stole that. Drop sell, in Maurice. Sell Drop the t-shirts. Luckily, Maurice has said that several times. I stole oh, it from really? Him. I apologize. Do not sell the t-shirt. <laughs> Do not. Take the t-shirt back. We'll okay. call it We'll call it uh, 11 and a half for Jack and an even 10 for Zach. Mm. Delightful. <sighs> all right. Um, here's, here's a bold, spicy flavor prediction. Okay. A Mecca Abuka will lead Ohio State in receiving yards. It's going to be hard with Jackson Smith and Jigwe catching 130 passes. Yeah, that's right correct. That, but that's why it's a bold prediction. I think Emeka Abuka is going to be a national star by the middle point of the season. And whether that's what he does on kick returns that brings him to the, the four for people, um, maybe. maybe they're going to see some explosion out of him. But I think that you're going to see him on the bubble screens, on all this other stuff that Paris Campbell did. Um, and I think you're going to see him as the guy that can really get down the field at times as well. Uh, I just think he's an electric player. Reminds me of Terry Glenn, who a lot of young guys may not know about, but like athletically, Terry Glenn is the best receiver I've ever seen at Ohio State. Just with his ability to go from zero to 60. And I haven't seen many guys in the last 25 years who are close to that sort of acceleration and, and burst as Emeka Abuka is. And I don't think people are going to be ready for him because you have to pay so much attention to Jackson Smith and Jigbo <clears throat> and Harrison. Mm, that's so that's, that's why drilled down i love that I'm trying to do the math to get the number right i think that paris johnson is going to finish with 94 pancakes this season i'm a little offended that you have gone <laughs> off offensive line uh, i was about to go offensive sorry. line. sorry sorry about your luck <sighs> i knew i couldn't let it go past me once more in the snake trap <laughs> uh we had several people asking us about paris johnson and what his camp has been like uh on the message board the horseshoe lounge at uh, Ohio State Rivals. Oh. Ohio State dot Rivals dot com dotting the eyes. Um, like they were concerned about the spring game performance. They heard us mention a couple times that uh, Jack Sawyer had won a couple one on ones when we were in an open viewing period. There is no concern over there on this field about what Paris Johnson can provide Ohio State at left tackle. Assuming that he's healthy for every game, he's going to be an absolute monster for the Buckeyes and a first round draft pick. Uh, next April or May, whenever they move the draft to at this point. Uh, I think he's going to destroy people. The way he finishes blocks and finishes plays, uh, if you haven't, it's another highlight uh, highlight film that's worth going to check out on YouTube. He is a violent competitor. Uh, I think it's going to be fun to watch him back in his natural element at tackle. I think he's going to be an anchor and a rock for the Buckeyes and do some... He's not Orlando Pace. He can do some things like that where people start paying attention to how many times he puts dudes on the ground. And I think it'll be in the 90s. Orlando well, Pace did that in the 90s. He did no, is that right? 90s. He invented oh. pancakes. Just bringing it back. Pancakes are a breakfast food uh. that people like to put a little syrup on and eat in the morning. Gross. Uh, how many more of these are we doing? Last, last, one more. last round. One, one more. One? Okay. Last round. Well, I'm doing an offensive line. Um, they're going to have two first team All-Americans on the offensive line. Mm. Paris, Paris will be one of them because I agree with everything you said. Okay. Donovan Jackson is going to be a first team all-American. I don't know on what list. I'm not going to drill down that much. He's going to get on one of them. He's going to be a free There are a lot of them. He's going to get a tree in Buckeye Grove. Uh, one, because I'm going to be the one championing, championing him to become a first-team All-American after how well I think he's going to play this year. Yeah. I think their run game is going to accentuate his and Paris's athletic ability and allow them to do the kind of things that people who maybe don't know what they're watching when they watch offensive line play to notice them to garner that kind of attention, to get them out in space, maybe have them pull more than we've seen Ohio State's offensive linemen pull. I just think they're, that left side of the offensive line is going to do a lot of damage this year. Mm. And even though Donovan is very young, he's a true sophomore starting for the first year, um, I think he's going to do enough to get that kind of attention. Donnie J. What Bill said was he thinks Donovan Jackson is going to do enough to get that kind of attention. That idiot plane just interfered. Shout out to Delta Airlines. Shout out Delta. Birds, planes, and sneezes. What yeah, this episode. has been one of those days. Uh, I think it was actually a dragonfly, not a bird. Was it? Yeah, either That's way. That's the biggest dragonfly I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> Steel Chambers is going to win the Buckus Award as the country's Whoa, best linebacker. Holy mackerel. That's bold. Uh, I don't think outside of what we saw how we saw Zach Boren in 2012 shore up the Ohio State defense when he got moved to linebacker from fullback, mm -hmm. a position that doesn't exist anymore at Ohio State. Uh -huh. Mitch Rossi Mitch would like a word. Yeah. He can have a word. <laughs> um, the point is, uh, Steel Chambers changed Ohio State's entire projection at linebacker when he decided that this is what he was going to do a year ago. And he was really good 
a year ago, and he's only going to be much better this year. And I think it's a position and a defense that's going to allow him to do some things in the turnover game where you'll see him pick off a ball or two and, and house it because he's a, a natural athlete who's played running back. I think he's going to have a monster year and win the Buckus Award. And I want to go back to when Steele was in high school and he got mad at me for saying that he was going to be a, a college linebacker, not a running back, and he was very upset. And I hope, Steele, that if you watch this, you can forgive me, but I believed in you. And now I'm. I handed, hope you can forgive me because I was right. Handing was you the right. hardware. That's, a, that's the best way I've heard someone say, told you so in a while. <laughs> uh, in post production, I'm going to graphically input a Lombardi uh, okay. Butkus Award no. here. Don't, well, not the Lombardi no, Award. Don't put it right in my. No, no, it's right here. So that's my final one Steel Chambers 2023 2022 Butkus Award winner. That's. Guys, buckle up. Okay. CJ Stroud uh -huh. is going to win the Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> trophy with 63 total touchdowns produced for Ohio State. It's cool we're doing bold predictions that are not bold. Oh, that's cold for you? I mean, the, the touchdown number is high. I like that. Yeah, it's a good number. I'm, going, hey, I'm good with that. I, the Heisman Trophy is hard to win, bro. Well, I think what we've talked about here today, and I don't mean to just take your spot, but I'm gonna. Um, if Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson each have a thousand yards. Uh -huh. If if Emeka Abuka leads the team in receiving yards and Jackson Smith and Jigba has a school record breaking <laughs> year as uh -huh. far as catches go, all those potential outliers to like upset CJ in the Heisman regional voting are gonna go by the wayside and CJ's gonna get all the votes. So I think it's easy to suggest that he's the guy who's gonna be in, in New York from the, the Midwest. Yeah. I look I know that it's not going Plus out he was on there a year ago. to take a finalist from a year ago the most talented offense in the country and say that he's going to win the Heisman. I understand that, but I also have covered the sport long enough to know that it's tough to go from week one to the end of the year as a favorite and validate that with the pressure every single week to do it. Um, we so, can yeah, take nothing for granted. You shouldn't take anything for granted. And it is incredibly hard because it's not just going undefeated in the sport is hard. Winning a national championship is hard. To be the one person to capture enough votes to win one trophy is one of the most challenging uh, things you can do in this sport or any sport yeah. because that you're you're going out of a pool of 130 teams and 85 scholarship athletes apiece. Now they can't all win it, but you know Bryce Young's going coming back to defend it. He's going to have a lot of support. He's got a teammate that there's going to be a ton of people that say, "Well, this is the year I should go to a defensive player." Will Anderson's clearly the or best. Or gives a running back. So you have all that working against you. It's hard to do it. I think he has the pieces. He has the skills. He has the mentality. He's he's going to do all the extra work outside of uh, media engagements to make sure that people are aware of him and his story. I think that that all trends in the right direction for him. Again, I know it's not the boldest prediction of what we said, but I do think it's more challenging than just saying, oh, well, one of the favorites is going to do it. Yeah. Um, That's why we'll, we do the podcast daily, so will, we can talk about this Will Ohio daily. State win the national championship? <laughs> yes, because I won't be there. <laughs> Spoiler alert. This team. Do you start public, is it, have you sent out public announcements or? <laughs> this team should win the national championship. That's all I'm gonna say. Are they? That's kind of bold prediction. I mean, I think they'll be there. I think they'll be at the national championship game. I'm not gonna. Number one, let's be very clear. This is 2022 bold predictions. That game will happen in 2023. Oh, I'm off the hook. That's a tremendous point. Wow. Okay. I'm off the hook. I do think they like. Yeah. I, Having a baby. I'm not having a baby. We're having a baby, so I won't be there. But I do think they're going to win. Because I think they have a national championship offense. They had one last year. And they will have the defense that gets them over the hump this year. I think that's I feel pretty confident. It's a team on a mission and a team with the personnel to do it. There, there are, in my opinion, only two teams really capable of competing at the highest level. And the last time they met, it wasn't a fair fight. Uh, the other team justifiably won the game. But... Ohio State versus Alabama with both teams firing on all cylinders of Bryce Young versus C.J. Stroud. Two Heisman Trophy winners based on my bold prediction. Sign me up for that. Sign me all the way up. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what comes to fruition during this 2022 season. The bold predictions are now here on the record at the podcast uh, daily. This has been Freaky Friday. Hope you enjoyed it. Be back with more on Monday for Game Week Ohio State Notre Dame.